The Great War, the war to end all wars, the First World War, or as it's commonly known, the world war that France did decently. Much is known about it, if you are a casual historian, and much is known of the gas attacks that took place during the war. However, what is not much known is the equipment used to survive the gas attacks, or its specific history, or the models. In this video, well, yeah, I'll be talking about it a bit. And I noticed that there's actually not many videos about World War I gas masks, other from American collectors, but, you know, no one wants to hear American collectors talk, so... Anyways, without further ado, let's uh, get into the video. Now, as opposed to Britain, who entered the war in 1914, along with, well, basically the entirety of Europe, America was a bit late to the party of which was the Great War. You see, America joined the war in 1917 after British intelligence intercepted the Zimmerman telegram, which urged Mexico to join the war on Germany's side. Of course, this pissed off America, because, well, you know, having your neighbours attack you is pretty damn annoying. And also the sinking of the Lusitania, which was a British passenger ship carrying American civilians. Um, it also, with unrestricted submarine warfare, it meant trade was being constantly stopped by German submarines firing on cargo ships. Of course, this pissed off good old Woody Wilson, which led to the USA joining the First World War on April 6, 1917. Now, of course, when America joined the war, they needed a respirator to be able to fight alongside their European allies against the Imperial German Army. Now, this is where the Type CE comes to place. Here it is, in its 106-year-old glory, uh, the American Type CE respirator, which I'm very happy to own. Uh, you can see right off the bat, we'll start with the bag, um, it has writing which is sadly, I can't really make it out, but I think that bottom part there is like shortened for regiment, so it's probably uh, a regiment of some sort. Um, now, if you get into the actual bag, the bag is very good condition. Uh, you can see it has like a buckle strap but there. Um, and if we open here, you can see it has like a little clip and surprisingly, when clipped on, if I even get it on, it doesn't make any noise, but that's pretty cool because it only make a little clip noise. Anyway, so I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> so we'll move on. See the inside, 1917. It looks like 252 but there. Uh, Sadly, everything up there I can't really read due to its age, and it's a bit faded. Now, let's show you the actual mask itself. Now, you can see, obviously, the filter has had way better days. Most of the original paint is gone, and, well, it's hollow, and there's a massive hole. However, what it lacks in condition, it makes up with interesting history. So, you see that right there? Uh, looks like a bit of crappy bit of tape that's been used to hold whatever's left of the filter together. You're right, but you're also wrong. Because, well, if you can see on screen, this right here is the plasters that come with the mask's manual, um, which is used for prepares of the actual mask itself. However, whether it was a collector at a later date, or perhaps a soldier that it was actually issued to, um, it was used to repair, obviously, some sort of hole. Uh, and that's the interesting thing about history. You don't know why it had to be repaired. Was it struck with something? Did the guy fall over in the trench and dent the filter? Never know. But yeah, you can see held together, quite similar to the Mark IV, which Battlefield 1 can't seem to tell apart, an SBR and a Mark IV. And you can see the bottom, it's quite interesting, give it a light blow to simulate, you know, sucking up air. You can see a little stamp at the bottom. Now let's move on to the hose. The hose, it's mummified and not in the best shape, uh, except for this part up here, which is quite good. 
but yeah the middle section of the hose which is quite a big bit is seen better days or has it really because you think of it when the mask was actually in its prime it would have been in the trenches of the first world war so yeah however luckily the trend of bad condition ends about this point uh you can see it is missing the xl valve however that is quite common for american type ce's due to their age um yeah, you can see the valve assembly right here with by the looks of it rt9 rt3 i can't really see that all too well but uh that seems to be like a manufacturer code yeah you can see right there that's the valve now let's get into the mask the face piece makes up for all of it because look at that size four which i believe is a size large um and you can see a little code up there 241096-D no idea what that means but that's pretty damn cool eye lenses perfect condition bit yellow but that's all right and if i turn it on its side real quick you can see ce mask model obviously type ce 25d and that but there can't really make that out is that a g is that a nine i don't know now let's look on the inside now here is a nose clamp and that's quite interesting uh basically you'd close you know clamp your nose did you know closing the name mate um which is very very cool and especially look there's like no rust at all is quite free moving it's pretty damn cool and here is the mouthpiece you'd breathe in and breathe out using this right here uh, think of it like a snorkel um obviously you'd breathe in through the hose breathe out through the non-existent xl valve now you can see normally the rubber basically this is like cloth coated in rubber right here um the rubber would be completely dried up uh completely just yeah smashed up and you wouldn't be able to move the mask however mine is in excellent condition uh despite its age uh, you can kind of see at the top what it does normally look like surprisingly sticky and the straps as well mint condition uh they would come with a safety pin with the aforementioned tape but there however i'm not willing to put a safety pin in a 106 year old relic of the first world war so i hope you understand but yeah you can see there's quite big straps for, or given by the size, a quite big fellow. So yeah, that is the American Type CE. Black hole sun, won't you come? Won't you the Type CE, or the corrected English as it stands for, box respirator was adopted in October of 1917 to fix the multitude of issues presented in the American small box respirator, which was the United States' first attempt of cloning the British small box respirator. Improvements to the ASBR uh, design presented in the corrected English, the Type CE, including greater rubber thickness, reinforced lenses, superior lens frames, reinforced angle tubes with an XL valve guard, which mine does not have, um, with over 1,864,000 Type CEs produced. Despite the adoption of the Richardson Flory Cops in February 1918, the Type CE was used by the American Expeditionary Force until the end of the war. After the armistice, many Type CEs were repurposed for training, put on the surplus market, kept in storage, or modified for industrial use. The face piece of the corrected English is made with a cloth backed by rubber located on the side of the face piece are two defogging pockets which can be inverted in order to manually clear lens fogging. The angle tube is mounted to the front of the face piece and leads into a rubber mouthpiece through which air can be inhaled and exhaled um, the interior of the mask also contains a nose clip connected to uh, the angle tube is the M1 flutter valve made from gum rubber and a 254mm or 10 inch if you want to be more simple hose leading to the canister. The CE came in five sizes, 
guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what? One, two, three, four, five. Wow, you're a genius. Alongside wide variants, the sizing is marked on both the carrier's flap and the circle created by the nose clip spring on the inside of the mask. The mask lenses can be made from either triplex glass, which is two layers of glass with a layer of celluloid uh, plastic between them or just plain old regular plastic. The mask invariably has a five point head harness. The change from a five to six point head harness is the primary difference between the CE and an RFK. Uh, the earlier type CEs have a head harness and are only adjustable by using a safety pin which is in the manual which I told you about earlier. Um, another midlife change to the CE uh, was underwent is an upgrade to the XL valve guard. Uh, the early type of guard was bulky, wrapped around the entire angle tube and used a single screw to fasten it to the mask. A later type is much lighter, uses two screws to lock into threaded ports molded into the angle tube. So, that's the video done. If you enjoyed it, feel free to pop a like, even subscribe if you're new. Um, this is my Instagram, this is my Discord, uh, anywhere you want to reach me if you have any questions, any suggestions, any corrections, or just leave a comment, I'll be happy to reply to you. But today's video was on the American Type CE. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new, and as always, have a good one.